I'm really interested in the, um, the kind of gentrification of urban areas. That's something that I record a lot, um, kind of in a more documentary style, but work with in a, in a visual way, um, kind of a lot of post-production and um, a lot of collage making and a lot of writing and a lot of drawing. So I kind of work with my imagery in that way. I work mainly um, with analogue um, photography, although I do use digital, um, depending on the subject matter. But a lot of my a lot of my landscapes, I often go with a um, with a film camera and a zoom lens, which I know sounds a bit strange because a lot of people will use wide angle when they they go to shoot a landscape. But I, because I make these composites um, and these collages, I quite like photographing kind of elements of the landscape, almost like they're objects, and then working with those images afterwards to kind of recreate the landscape. And I think that, I think that it's through that kind of process that I get this quite strange perspective on the landscape that a lot of people pick up on. That's the main process that I use to begin with, and then I often scan my film in and work with it digitally, um, and then I'll often print that Onto sort of retrace it onto film or onto acetate, and then work with it again in the dark room. So it kind of goes from analog to digital and back to analog again. I was really interested in um, in the idea of this factory that existed kind of before we were able to document it. And you know, I've been so interested in photographing these areas, particularly in East London, where it's got this kind of rich industrial history, and now um, not so much. So these are the flats that are, that are there now. I think it's, um, I think that one is Thomas Fry and Central House. So they were all built kind of over the last 10 years, um, some of them even more recently. But then, you know, you can see that I've kind of placed this, um, this Chinese folly there as well to kind of think about it as a factory landscape because, you know, we found some text that said the Bow Porcelain factory was this, um, was this amazing kind of, had this amazing architecture that was based on, on Cantonese um, architecture, so it was based on Chinese factories, um, which is why it was called New Canton, so it was this kind of appropriating their style of architecture into the English landscape, so, um, which has like a real resonance with the, um, the images on the plates as well, so I think it's a really interesting, interesting thing. The core idea that I had, which was to, you know, to photograph and document the area where this factory used to exist, was that's always sort of stayed, and that's been the main part of the practice. Um, but yeah, I think that through research, I think that I've become really interested in the, the reappropriation of these kind of um, Oriental style plants um, that the bow porcelain painters used to paint, and sort of that into the landscape. So I think that's. That kind of was a development that I hadn't considered before. I was really more interested in, in photographing the, the kind of urban area and the, the factory landscape as opposed to really yeah, working with nature and working with, um, with those kind of elements. So this is an image that I've constructed from floor plans from, um, from Thomas Fry Court, which is the flats that are built on the area where the Bow Porcelain factory was. Um, but it's also it's a bit of a hybrid with um, with plans from a, a Chinese folly from a 17th century garden as well. So trying to make these hybrid drawings of um, of different parts of different buildings mixed together. When you expose the image, you place the um, place the contact print on top of the paper and expose it to sunlight, um, and maybe this take and maybe two minutes, and then you take it off and then you wash it, and that's when. Um, that's when the paper gets fixed and, and the image appears. <clears throat> so I'm just using like a, um, a contact print frame. So when you make contact prints in the dark room, you'll use one of these. This paper as well is, is pre-coated, so it's, it's quite, it's not a good quality paper. Um, so for the actual image that I'm making, I'm using a really nice kind of heavyweight Fabriano paper that I'm coating myself. You mix, um, you mix these two different chemicals um, together with distilled water, um, which you then coat the paper with, um, and that creates the chemical, and that's the cyanotype chemical that you use. So this is where the negative turns into a positive, so all the areas that were blue before are now going white. And you can see it's quite, um, it's quite a different kind of blue to the ones that you saw that were hanging up because when it dries, it goes a lot darker. So it will go that kind of more Prussian blue afterwards. Just... 
So you just kind of wash it until the water runs clear off it, which it, um, it is now. What's, what's been really nice is just finding a new way of working, and this is actually the first time I've been making cyanotypes, because there's something about the blueprint which has always been really significant to my work, because I've been looking at all these architectural and and um, kind of planning, um, city planning sheets, but I've never really taken that part of it into my work, so I think that that's been really nice to work in that way. So um, it's almost simplified some of the processes I've been using as well, where I've been kind of making a lot of digital composites and, and printing it and working with it and it going through lots and lots of processes where actually this is a really simple one and I think it's made me feel, yeah, a lot more hands-on with the actual process of, of making the print.